So in this video, I want to show you how to make some Peruvian empanadas and this sort of really famous, absolutely delicious. And I'll tell you a bit about the history as well in a second. But first we need to make the dough. So just get some flour, some plain flour. Ideally use some double O flour. It's a bit better. I teach you that all in my online courses, why and the hows and the whys. And then add some salt, some butter. Um, what we're basically making here is a really simple uh, pie crust, but it's actually quite wet. So there's quite a bit of water in it. And that is simply because you want to have it to be sort of really quite wet, quite sort of soft, because you don't want to have that really hard casing later on. So that's one of the most important steps. And then just mix it. And if you don't have a mixer, just do it all by hand. Do it in a bowl first, just like I do here. And then you just switch onto your work surface so that you develop the gluten really really nicely gluten development is something that i teach you a lot in my online courses how much you do it how much you don't when you don't do it and why would you do it and all of that so check out my online courses for that too so now we just mix the dough and then i will show you how to make the filling so I'll tell you a little bit about the history of empanadas so they are stuffed bread or pastry that's either baked or fried and you find it in many countries throughout Latin America as well as South of Europe and the name comes from the verb empanar meaning to wrap or coat in bread. So empanada is made by folding a dough or bread patty around some stuffing and the stuffing can consist of a variety of meats, vegetables and even fruits which I will tell you a little bit later. So now we just take the dough and push it together into a bowl and then let it rest for at least half an hour so that the gluten can relax. So in between we make the filling. Yeah. So with Peruvian empanadas, they're often made with beef, but they always have some distinctive flavors, which is obviously some corn you find often in them, a tomato based sauce, as well as olives and sometimes sun-dried tomatoes. So it's really sort of up to you what you put in there. The recipe I give you today is just one of those many, many different versions that you can have. So onions went in there, now bay leaf, I have sweet corn, some chicken thighs, then some smoked paprika because that adds a really nice smoky note to it. And then you can add sort of any spices you want to add to it. And the Peruvian cooking is very interesting because there's a lot of African influences. It obviously has a lot of native foods there already too. It's one of the richest sort of cuisines in the world. And then you also had a lot of big of a Chinese influence. So it's a real mixture and it's a real fun way of cooking. So now just place a lid on it, cook it. And once you find that the chicken thighs are cooked, you take them out and then the rest of the ingredients, you basically cook it down until it's a thick paste. And then we will mix that all together. And in between we chop up the chicken and mix it all together and that is your meat filling so it is quite wet but you just cook all the liquid away and it will be just fine so hen pies like empanadas sort of have actually have the origin in roman times where they have been a staple food for the roman army when being on foot on their campaigns and they spread them through the empire so they went into the arabic world england everywhere so the romans were the inventor of the pie and one of the offsprings is obviously the Cornish pastry and the, and the cousin of it, it's the empanada. And the name or the empanada as we know today has its origin in Galicia and Spain, as well as in Portugal. And now let's chop up the chicken and I'll tell you a bit about more. So that they first appeared in the medieval Iberia during the time of the Moorish invasion, you know, Spain has been occupied by the Moors for almost a thousand years. And a cookbook published in Catalan in, 19, in 1520 mentions empanada filled with seafood among its recipes of the Catalan, Italian, French and Arabian foods. So it's believed that empanadas are sort of very similar to the calzone uh, both derived from Arabic meat-filled pies as well as samosas. So the Arabs invented quite a lot of things. Obviously, pasta got invented by them too, and so did ice cream. So, and they spread a lot of those foods into Europe through Spain. And from there, they obviously then traveled over to the Americans. So now it's just a traditional thing with Peruvian empanadas is also hard-boiled eggs. So I just boiled an egg, I build it quickly, just chop it up and mix that through too and 
Then we have our filling together. I often add some sun-dried tomatoes and then of course you can add some fresh herbs. So chop up a few olives. You can have a mixture of green and black and then some herbs. I often add some parsley or some coriander. It's really nice spring onions. So just feel pretty free with your filling there. It's, it's not a set, yeah? And then here's the coriander. Mix it all together and that's our filling. And ideally let it chill down. It's a bit easier to handle if if the whole mixture is chilled down, at least the room temperature, if it's fridge temperature, it's even easier to handle. So, and now let's put them together. So here's our pastry and you can see it is quite soft. So get a bit of flour, dust your surface with some flour, just take a piece of the pastry and then you can roll it out by hand or you just can push it out with your palms of your hand. I also often use a tortilla press, which works really well. And that is obviously one of the most famous street foods in Peru because it is a pie that you just grab on the side of the road and then take it with you and eat it as you go. You can eat it hot, you can eat it cold, they freeze really well. After baking you can put them in the fridge for easily for a week and just reheat them quickly and they're pretty amazing. So in Galicia and Spain and Portugal empanadas are sort of prepared similar to a large pie and then they are cut into pieces making them sort of even more portable and a hearty meal for working people so it's make really big ones of them and the Portuguese and the Galician empanadas often include tuna, sardines, chorizos, they can have codfish in there, pork loin and meat and fish is very commonly mixed sort of with tomatoes, garlic and a rich onion sauce and that's the oil filled inside that bread casing and due to the large number of Galician immigrants into Latin America, the empanada also became very popular in that region or it's also known as Galega. The dish was then sort of carried to Latin America and the Philippines where you find them as well and it's by Spanish colonists. Um, where they remain a very, very popular dish to this day. So that's that's a bit about the history of those empanadas. So they're not South American at all. Um, they're not that Spanish either. So they actually have the origin in Roman times. So all I do is just roll it all out and I push it all a bit together. And then you can sort of always need to um, put a bit of egg wash on the end just to make sure they stick nicely together and then just push it down with a fork. That's sort of the traditional way of doing them. There's of course many, many different other ways you can do them. And I'll show you some much nicer ways in one of my online courses. And then just brush them with egg wash on the top, which is literally just beaten up egg. And that will give them a really beautiful golden color. If you want to make them super shiny, you brush them once again, just when you take them out of the oven, and then they have a really glossy golden shine. So into the oven, it's sort of around 180 to 200 degrees fan force for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. The filling is already cooked, so don't have to worry about cooking the filling. You just want to cook the pastry. So if you enjoyed that, please subscribe to my channel. Also check out my online cooking courses. And I love those empanadas. They're really good. The kids love them as well. As I said, make different fillings. You can freeze them. They last in the fridge for a long time. And the simple food is very really good for every day and brilliant for pre-cooking too. So I look forward to seeing it one of my other recipes and I hope you enjoy them. 